Hello and welcome back to Westminster Middle School Robotics. Today we're going to go over these three demo robots right here. They are demonstration robots I built this past summer for you guys to learn to code on to hopefully exist for the end of time. And in this video, we're going to go over what in the world they are. In another video, we'll maybe go over some maintenance tips if things start breaking and you want to try fixing it yourself, as well as advanced building tips included in this robot and the three demo robots because one of them is a sword and it's pretty awesome. So stay tuned to the end of the video to find out what in the world this thing is. But for now, let's start with Demo Robot 1. This is a simple claw bot designed to pick up these wooden blocks one by one, maybe in a group, stack them. It's good coding and driving practice. Our end effector is a V5 robot claw. This thing sits at the end of a six bar lift. So when you power this one motor, it will wind up raising the arm all the way up and back down. Now, the drive base is fairly simple. We have a motor on the left and right that can power to go forward, backwards, and then turn. Depending how you control the motors, you can get different driving behaviors. The way I have coded all of our robots so far, and the way I recommend you guys, is this left joystick, channel three, forward, will make the whole robot go forward, so forward, they'll push it away from me right now, backwards, we'll pull it closer to me. And then channel one, the right joystick, when you turn it to the left, the robot will spin counterclockwise, turning to the left. And when you pull the joystick to the right, the robot will spin clockwise, turning the robot to the right. That's this robot. We have a battery up in here, when you're routing the wire, just make sure it doesn't somehow get caught up in these gears. It shouldn't, but just be careful with that. And this is a pretty robust robot. I highly recommend you guys start learning here because you do have some sensors to code on. This robot has two sensors, a bump switch and a limit switch that effectively do the same thing because what happens is when the arm reaches one of its end positions, so either all the way down or all the way up, the sensor will be pressed and say, hey arm, please stop moving so I don't tear myself to pieces. Y'all can totally learn to code that, it's not too hard, and we have a demo code loaded to show how the functionality will work. All right, Demo Robot 2 is up on its side, and guess what? It has a cute little face, just for fun. But this robot is one of the best drive bases that I would recommend you guys building. It is what 6199E used and successfully brought to Worlds two years in a row. And what it is, is motors in the back, chained, or motors in the back, directly powering this rear wheel that then is chained to the front wheel. So you have your right side and your left side. And what this means is you have all wheel drive, so you get much more precise turning and things like that, as well as being stronger when you're trying to push around another robot. As for what this robot actually does, it is a roller bot. So we have a motor, an extra motor hidden down in there that can raise and lower this linkage. This gets powered, spins, and pulls along this bar to then open this guy's little mouth. This other motor spins something called a rubber band roller, which you might use a lot depending on the games you wind up playing, but it's rubber bands stretched across two cogs that can suck in a ball. So these change up balls from our 2021 game could be extremely fun for you guys to practice on, but tennis balls or really whatever work. What I would recommend you use this robot for is to start learning to code some more advanced sensors. This base is so precise that we can put some ultrasonic and vision sensors and stuff like that on it. Meaning, when you want to start coding sensors, you'll have a really good platform to build from. Since this is effectively the most demo bot of all the demo bots. Anyway, moving on to the third one, which will absolutely get a reveal video. This is the Swerve Drive. Do I recommend you try to build one of these yourself? Probably not, but the point is to show you guys what is possible with VEX and engineering robotics in general and in the wider world outside of these few walls of the Steam Lab. So what we have going on here are, now flip it over, we have 
two powered wheels that spin, you know, just pretty normally, right? They just turn. And they also can spin as much as they want in any direction. So this allows the robot to do some pretty funky stuff. It can go anywhere it wants, facing any way it wants. And there's better ways to do this in VEX, but this is an overcomplicated way to show you some pretty cool stuff. Once again, Omni wheels just skidding on the ground, and we also have the ability to pick up balls because this robot needed to have some other functionality besides driving. We have two motors powering separate intake rollers, and they're just conveyor belt type rollers that can bounce in and out on a little rubber band hinge. And you know, you push a ball in, it'll hold them out. Effectively, just a nice intake style robot. This is what our most advanced coders can start to learn to code some pretty crazy stuff on because coding a swerve does require a good bit more math. Now, let's start this up and actually show you guys a bit of what happens when you go to drive it, because that's what's important. When we boot up our controller, what we're gonna wanna do is make sure the wheels are aligned. That means the blue tape is at the back of the robot on both, and they're not like off like that. They need to be straight. Eventually, I'd like to see someone go ahead and start to code a part where the robot recognizes exactly where its wheels are and brings them back automatically. But for now, with the code I have loaded, you need to manually bring your wheels so they're aligned. And then you go into programs, just as you normally would. And you can pick either of the two demos. They're the exact same code. I just loaded it twice for redundancy. We're gonna hit run. And what we see is a prompt on the controller saying confirm the brain and a prompt on the screen saying confirm you centered the wheels. This is really important. I've said it in the video and now I've told the robot to basically yell it at you. That's because their swerve will probably break itself if the wheels aren't aligned when you try to drive it. It's reminding you, blue tape faces backwards, wheels are parallel, and then to continue to the drive code, to actually drive this thing, because right now nothing happens, what you need to do is simultaneously hold down the A button and then hold down the controller screen. And you're gonna, oh, let me take this cover off. You're gonna hold down your A button and the controller screen, and we're gonna see a green loading bar. Once that done, that's done, we can let go and drive. Now we have our Ford. Uh-oh. Did I just lose a wheel? Yes, yes, I did. There we go. This would appear to be a wire on its way out, so I'll fix that in just a second. But we have Ford and backwards, just controlling normally. Left and right does nothing here though in some sort of drive setups it could. And then we have turning, just moving this left and right. And then for special functions of the swerve, let's stand up and we can go ahead and press this left button, left arrow will spin the wheels to the side. And now the robot can straight sideways like that. Alternatively, we can spin it back to the center, to the other side, and once again, and let's do our final position. Down arrow does something kind of cool. Let me back it up first. The down arrow will do something kind of cool where it spins the wheels into a more unique pattern. And then we can go like this. Pretty fun stuff. I hope this one inspires you. You can try coding some advanced stuff and then these two will allow you to code more practical driver practice stuff, and then sensor practice stuff. It's, as always, it's been a pleasure mentoring you guys virtually, even though I am graduated now. Hope you guys do well, and go Cats. See you later.